What happens in Japan stays in Japan. Or at the very least, that was the case in Japan's earlier history, up until oh, the 1850s or so. Today, on the other hand, Japan is one of the leading players in the global entertainment industry, thanks to the increasing popularity of Japanese movies, anime, and of course, video games. Japanese video games are at the heart of Japanese media getting spread to overseas markets, largely thanks to series like Mario, The Legend of Zelda, Pokemon, Persona, etc. And yet, despite the global popularity of some of these game series, you might be kind of surprised to find out just how many games never get to leave Japan. Which is why I am here before you today. We're going to talk about some of the more interesting and great Japanese games that for reasons we'll discuss, never got to leave Japan. As a matter of fact, there are just so many great Japanese exclusive games that I simply could not talk about them on my own. So helping me out with this video today is one Mr. 8-Bit Brody. He's a great guy with great sideburns and a great channel. He will not only be giving us some of the details on the games on this list, but the other half of this list is also going to be on his channel. There's gonna be a link to it in the description, or if you wanna wait until the end card, there's going to be a link to the other half of the video and his channel. But until then, let's get on with this half of the list. Now, originally, I was going to talk about how there's a handful of Shin Megami Tensei games that never left Japan, but on researching it further, I think you'd all be a lot more interested in hearing about the curious case of Persona 2. You know, Persona? Ever heard of it? Ringing a bell? It's only one of the most beloved JRPG series on the market right now, you know, no biggie. But it wasn't always that way. Enter the PS1, home of the first two wildly less successful Persona games. Due to software limitations at the time, Persona 2 came out across two games, Persona 2 Innocent Sin and Persona 2 Eternal Punishment. But only Eternal Punishment left Japan, and even then was heavily censored in American art. It left many fans wondering why Innocent Sin, which is effectively the first half of the game, was left unreleased. After all, if it were sales and the Nazi imagery that Atlas was afraid of, then why even bother releasing Eternal Punishment, right? Wouldn't it just make more sense to just not localize Persona 2 at that point? Alas, we just don't know for sure. But eventually, the PSP port of Innocent Sin did get released in the West, ironically without a PSP port of Eternal Punishment, yet again for reasons completely unknown. But combining the original release of Eternal Punishment and the PSP port of Innocent Sin, it is at least possible in a roundabout way to play the entirety of the heavily Americanized, over-censored English version of Persona 2 in its entirety. But the bad news is there is still no official port outside of Japan that contained both. Everyone wants to be Zelda. Since Zelda first came out, every other game studio wanted to beat Nintendo at their own game. After A Link to the Past cemented the formula in 1991, however, copying Zelda was never easier. Which brings us to Gunman's Proof. Released in 1997, nearly a year after the N64 had made its way into homes, this game was destined for commercial failure. Put bluntly, it's a clone of A Link to the Past, but set in the American West. You do all the things you would do in a Zelda game. You explore dungeons, collect and upgrade items, help strangers with their odd requests. You get the idea. Something about the Old West setting makes this game extremely charming, though. And with fan translations available online, you have no reason not to check out this gem. Come on, Reggie, give us Mother 3! How about this instead? If you only know about one Japan-exclusive game, there's a pretty good chance it's Mother 3, the poster child of Japan-exclusive games and the sole source of at least half of Reggie fils -Aimé's headaches over the last decade. Mother 3 is the third and final game of the illustrious Mother trilogy, probably best known for its second game, Mother 2, or in America, Earthbound. Incidentally, the first Mother game also didn't leave Japan, but unlike Mother 3, it was at least scheduled to at some point that we know of. And of course, 20 years later, it was released as Earthbound Beginnings on the Virtual Console. The first Mother's English cancellation can be attributed mostly to technical issues and the launch of the SNES happening around the same time, but we're here to talk about its much more mysterious sequel, Mother 3. There's no definitive reason why it didn't come out in English, but many speculate it's because of how poorly Earthbound sold in America. And it's a darn shame that it was never officially released in English too, because in Japan, 
Japan, it's actually tied with the first Mother game as the best-selling game in the trilogy. Oh well. Remember what I said about everyone wanting to be Zelda? Apparently, even Nintendo wanted to take a crack at making a game like their own game. Released at the tail end of the Super Famicom's life cycle, Marvelous, Another Treasure Island, is a gem lost to time. This gorgeous game is what would happen if A Link to the Past had more polish and charm, and you stripped away all the weight and predetermined conventions of a Zelda title. What if a game was made to just be fun? To feel like exploring the wild, like you did as a kid? Well, Marvelous is that game. In a lot of ways, this is sort of a lost Zelda title. You see, it was the first game to be directed by Aegean Anuma, who earned his fame piloting the ship to most of the more successful main series Zelda titles. But this, this game right here, was where it all started. He got to hone his skills on the Zelda formula using a modified version of the A Link to the Past engine, and he could not have had a better start. If you enjoy the Zelda franchise, or even the Mother series, this will be right up your alley. Y'all knew I couldn't not bring Dot .hack up in this video. There are a couple of Dot .hack spin-off games that never left Japan, like Versus, Fragment, and Mobile, but only one main series Dot .hack game never left Japan, and that is the elusive Dot .hack link. Like pretty much everything else on this list, fans have never been given a specific reason why it was never localized, but in looking at the details of its release, it's pretty easy to understand why Bamco wouldn't want to bring this game overseas. Reviews for Dot .hack link were mediocre at best and awful at worst, with most reviews leaning toward awful. As if that weren't bad enough, it was on the PSP, a handheld that went largely overlooked pretty much everywhere but Japan. So not only would Bamco have been working with an extremely limited market by bringing it overseas, but they ran a really high risk of fans not even liking it all that much. So as much as fans would love to try it, it's pretty easy to understand why it was never localized. Doesn't mean fans want it any less, but at least it's understandable. And with all that, I hope we were able to give you some useful information for your next Japanese game-themed trivia night. And just in case we weren't, as a reminder, the other half of this list is on Brody's channel. And speaking of Brody, let me tell you about him briefly. I'm gonna guess that if you watched this video, you are at least mildly interested in video games. So, good news! Uh, you're my favorite character in Undertale. Actually, you drive a hard bargain. How about one dollar? Every waking moment is a nightmare. Don't try to be funny. You're not funny. Hey there. For real though, he's a super cool dude, makes great videos about conventions, video games, general shenanigans, and most importantly, he has a very consistent upload schedule every two weeks, like clockwork.